The shocking tragedy that unfolded in Ashley's relationship serves as a haunting reminder that behind closed doors, love can morph into a nightmare. The fantasy of meeting in person and starting the relationship they had been longing for almost a decade became a reality. In November 2021, the 19-year-old Canadian girl, Ashley, traveled over 7,000 kilometers to the United Kingdom on a tourist visa to meet her love, Jack Seppel. Chelmsford, the capital of Essex County located in the east of England, was the destination where Jack lived. Finally, after maintaining a relationship through social media for seven years, the lovers met in person and fulfilled the dream of sharing their lives together. In the months following the visit, they were extremely cheerful. The world witnessed the affection and joy they felt while living together and exploring the European country. However, the happiness began to fade away when they were outside the spotlight of social media. Jack's attitude changed, and the person Ashley had known during their long virtual conversations was not as kind as he had shown before. Ashley discovered the true face of the person she believed was the love of her life when psychological and physical violence became increasingly frequent. The young woman tried to escape the ordeal, but it was too late. On February 1, 2022, the police found Ashley's lifeless body with the perpetrator by her side at the house on Tennyson Road while he was having a video call with the victim's sister. The pain and indignation over Ashley's tragic end spread across the world, echoing the journey that began as an adventure but turned into her worst nightmare. Ashley Wadsworth was born on July 25, 2002, in a small city called Vernon in British Columbia, Canada. She lived there with her parents, Christian and Kenneth, and her older sister, Haley. When Ashley was just a child, her parents made the decision to separate, but they maintained a good relationship, and the girls remained in their mother's care. This didn't hinder them from being a united family. Ashley was a cheerful, restless, and curious girl. Although she felt comfortable in the small community where she lived, she dreamed of exploring the world, getting to know other cultures, people, and interests. After traveling within Canada, Mexico, and the United States, her desire to expand her knowledge grew, igniting her sense of adventure. She was unstoppable and full of energy. She approached everything with passion and commitment, which reflected in her academic pursuits during her school years. Her academic transformation had been a priority from an early age. In her adolescence, she was already fluent in English, French, and Spanish. She also possessed great athletic abilities. However, she was also a deeply spiritual person. At the age of 18, after experiencing a strong connection with God, she joined the Mormon Church. There, she found her own community and made wonderful friends. As a reward for her dedication and hard work, Ashley received an honored diploma upon graduation and was accepted into Columbia University, British Columbia to pursue her studies in law. However, the young woman made the decision to postpone her enrollment at the university for a while. There was something more important to her, something she had put off for years. Despite being sociable and charismatic, Ashley faced challenges when it came to relationships with boys. At the tender age of 12, a serendipitous encounter occurred when her friend introduced her to Jack Seppel, a young lad residing in the United Kingdom via a social network. Despite a significant four-year age gap and physical separation, their connection thrived, revealing an undeniable and profound bond. Their friendship blossomed as they engaged in lengthy and immersive conversations, transcending the barriers of distance. Their relationship continued to develop over the years, and Jack became a familiar face in the Wadsworth house. It was common to find them engaged in long FaceTime conversations. Ashley's feelings for Jack began to deepen. Despite having other relationships and experiencing inconsistent communication, Ashley found herself perpetually comparing every guy she encountered to Jack. The idea of meeting Jack in person became increasingly prominent in her thoughts. Moreover, it would provide an opportunity to fulfill her long-standing desire to explore the world. Ashley started planning the greatest adventure of her life. She felt a mix of excitement and nervousness. The desire to meet Jack face to face and embark on a journey of exploration together became overwhelming. She recognized that this trip would be a turning point in her life, offering a chance to have unique experiences and discover more about herself along the way. Furthermore, the planning for her grand adventure began. Ashley informed her family that she had finally decided to embark on the trip to the United Kingdom to meet Jack in person, a trip she had longed for. Initially, her parents were filled with concerns and fears. They were unsure about allowing their young daughter to travel alone to a distant country to meet a boy they barely knew. However, Ashley received support from her grandfather, who encouraged her desire to explore the world. 
After some time, her parents realized they couldn't prevent her from going. Although they still saw her as their little girl, they recognized that she was a young adult with the right to make her own decisions. The adventure was about to begin. Ashley was stepping into an unknown world full of possibilities and challenges. She knew there would be obstacles along the way, but she was determined to overcome them. Once the cumbersome procedures were completed, on November 11, 2021, Ashley boarded the plane that took her to the United Kingdom, where she finally met her beloved friend in Chelmsford, Essex. The young woman held a tourist visa, allowing her to stay in the country for six months. Their plan was to share Jack's house until April 2022. After years of delay, their long-awaited love story has finally come to fruition. The places they had hoped to visit, the hugs they had longed to exchange, the conversations and laughter they had fantasized about during those years of virtual connection were now becoming a reality. Ashley and Jack began to travel within the country, visiting London and capturing photos in iconic places, which they shared on their social media. They appeared happy, sharing countless moments together, which reassured Ashley's parents, who still held some slight concerns. Ashley's sister, Haley, spoke with her daily and witnessed from a distance how fulfilled she felt with the decision she had made. Ashley quickly became beloved by the people she met in this new country she had arrived in. She joined the local Mormon church, where she found friends who shared her interests and faith. Even the neighbors of the house she shared with Jack on Tennyson Road were delighted by her joy and energy, brightening up the neighborhood. However, as the months went by and the couple grew closer, the initial happiness began to fade away. Things took a turn for the worse as Jack's true self started to emerge, controlling and aggressive. He forced Ashley to grant him access to her social media accounts, deleting all the photos prior to their trip and keeping only the latest ones they had taken together. He monitored her conversations and pressured her to distance herself from her family and friends, wanting her to focus solely on him. Ashley concealed this reality from her loved ones for a while, not wanting to worry them. She believed that it was just a phase that Jack would overcome once he realized her trustworthiness. However, the situation didn't improve, it only worsened. Ashley had to create fake profiles behind Jack's back to communicate with people in her environment. She had no choice but to seek help from those she knew could assist her. The situation became increasingly unbearable. What had initially begun as psychological violence had escalated to physical violence, with Jack repeatedly assaulting her and keeping her locked in the house. The love that Ashley had once felt for Jack had transformed into fear, an overwhelming fear she couldn't face alone. Even though they were separated by more than 7,000 kilometers, Ashley confided in her sister, revealing the horrifying reality she was living in. Immediately, her family did everything in their power to bring her back to Canada. The originally planned six-month trip was cut short to three months when they purchased a return ticket for February 1, 2022. However, on that day, everything spiraled out of control. In the morning of February 1st, Ashley informed Jack that she had a ticket to return to Canada on February 3rd. Upon hearing these words, he unleashed his fury and violently attacked her, driven by the pent-up aggression he had harbored towards his girlfriend. The punches and screams reverberated throughout the neighborhood, alerting the residents that something was gravely wrong. Ashley's desperate plea for help confirmed their suspicions when she managed to escape the assault, fleeing from the house and knocking on her neighbor's door. She recounted the horrifying events, explaining that Jack had lost control, not only physically assaulting her but also throwing their family cat against the door. The neighbor urged Ashley to call the police and report the incident, but the young woman refused, insisting that they could resolve the situation privately. Reluctantly, the neighbor accompanied her back home. She observed Jack appearing calm and apologizing to Ashley, although she felt uncertain about leaving the girl alone with her aggressor. The neighbor had a medical appointment to attend but assured them that she would return to check on them. While everything seemed to normalize on the surface, Ashley's fear remained deeply ingrained. One day around 12.45, Ashley seized a moment of opportunity to message her friends from the local church, urgently requesting their assistance, indicating that it was an emergency. However, a few hours later, they received another message from Ashley assuring them that everything was fine. Nevertheless, the situation seemed highly suspicious to them, prompting them to visit her house. Two friends arrived at her location and persistently knocked on the door. Receiving no response, they immediately notified the police. Law enforcement arrived at the scene and instructed the residents to come out onto the street, yet once again, there was no response. The officers forcibly broke down the front door and entered the house. It was approximately 1 p.m. Inside, they discovered Ashley's lifeless body, with Jack beside her, engaged in a video call with his sister. The authorities swiftly arrested the predator while making efforts for several minutes to revive Ashley, unfortunately without success. It was already too late. Following his arrest, Jack displayed no visible expression or remorse as he admitted to the murder of Ashley. Meanwhile, the forensic examination conducted on the victim's body revealed that in addition to being strangled, she had also been stabbed multiple times in the chest. 
She had at least 90 wounds inflicted by a household knife that the killer had hidden behind a radiator and was discovered during the on-site investigation. During the analysis conducted on Jack's mobile phone, authorities discovered a self-recorded video where he could be seen speaking to the camera covered in blood, confessing to Haley that he had murdered his sister, with her body visible in the background. Fortunately, no evidence was found indicating that the video had been actually sent. Given the clear evidence against him, Jack Seppel was taken into custody until his trial, which will determine his sentence. Meanwhile, the Chelmsford community remained in a state of shock upon learning the terrible news. However, some residents who had known Jack in the past were aware of the kind of person he was. It then came to light that he had an extensive history of crimes and violence, which both Ashley and her family were unaware of for approximately seven years. His long list of prior offenses included complaints of online harassment, assaults, and violations of restraining orders. His own mother had been a victim of his behavior, but it was an ex-girlfriend who dared to report him for illegal detention and assault. At that time, he was charged with coercive and controlling behavior. However, during the trial, the complainant did not appear to testify, so his conviction was overturned, and he was only ordered to maintain distance from the victim. On the other hand, on February 1, 2022, with the horrific murder of Ashley demonstrated the extent of his capabilities and the danger he posed to society. Finally, on October 10th of the same year, he was sentenced to life imprisonment with a minimum of 23 and a half years. Haley Wadsworth, Ashley's older sister, with whom she also had a friendship, was the one who delivered the terrible news to their parents about the murder of their younger family member. In that moment, their hearts were forever shattered, carrying immense pain for their tragic loss. In that manner, both in Canada and the United Kingdom, marches have been held to honor Ashley's life and remember her as the vibrant and curious young girl who dreamed of experiencing the world beyond her hometown Vernon. Above all, she is remembered as a young person with great passions who was willing to do whatever it took to show the depth of her emotions to the people she loved. Despite the impact of the tragedy on the Wadsworth family and the pain they have carried since then, they have found a way to keep Ashley's spirit alive through videos that preserve her memory and capture her essence. But above all, as Ashley would have wanted, they have turned their pain into a reason to fight and warn others about the dangers that can sometimes be hidden behind social media. Furthermore, since then, they have been encouraging society to get involved when they learn that a woman is experiencing domestic violence, and in this way, be part of the support network that will ultimately restore her freedom. It is interesting to see how Ashley's memory lives on in every action her support group takes. Her brave spirit and desire to protect others are the driving force behind their fight. Every word they share and every campaign they promote is imbued with the determination that the message is clear, we must not remain silent in the face of violence. No matter how difficult it may seem, there is always a way to make a difference. Ashley taught us that, and her legacy lives on in every heart that joins this cause. Once again, dear audience, I appreciate your company. Thank you for giving space in your time to learn about another case on this channel. Feel free to tell me in the comments what you think about it. In your opinion, did Jake still love her, and what changed in their relationship since they started living together? Or was she unfortunately a victim of a long-distance relationship gone wrong? I hope that despite the sadness of this case, you have had a good time in my company. Thank you for listening, and don't forget to follow for more crime stories.